This is such an exciting podcast for us. This lesson's from last time with two of my favorite people. And I, you and I rarely talk, but I know everything about you. I have Sarah and Aiden Keller. So first of all, thank you for coming in. This is going to be crazy cool. I'm excited. So am I. And you guys had no idea what to expect. So I think that's really fun too, because we don't really tell people what to expect. We just say, come on in, let's talk. But we have so many places we can go uh, with a conversation with you two. So for those listening and, and for those watching, Sarah, you were one of our best podcasts of all time. Without question. Shared so much information about your journey. And so if people are listening to this or watching this, I would recommend go back, like stop, go back, watch Sarah's podcast, and then come back and watch this one. Um, because Aiden, you're a bit in Sarah's podcast. The I, origins of Aiden is in Sarah's podcast. I have to be honest, I haven't listened to the whole thing. You haven't? <laughs> it took me about a month to listen to it after we did it. Really? Before I listened to it. And then I listened to it as if it wasn't me. I put mm. AirPods in and went for a hike and turned it on and listened to the whole entire thing. And at the end of it, I thought, Dang, <laughs> that girl's amazing. <laughs> That's it was a awesome. Really you nice see lesson that. In yeah, and seeing that about myself. I'm I suspicious. Think I was a little worried about her listening. Not uh -huh. worried about you listening to it, but I did entirely open up. I know. Shared. I called you. <laughs> the little portion I listened to, I called you after, and I was like, I'm not listening to the rest. Where did you stop? She said she had the option to get an abortion, and I was like, well. How could you ever do that? Look at me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. And that's when you pause. You're like, I, I can't. It, I'm not going to do back. this. Did you hear the part about her crying in the in Dick Sporting Goods yes, parking lot? And... That's about where I saw G.I. Joe's. G.I. Oh, Joe's. Oh, so I kept saying Dick Sporting Goods. For okay, anyone sorry. that, oh, that yeah. listens to this, G.I. Joe's. We okay. all miss G.I. Joe's. Yeah. It took a minute and still mourn the loss Rip of G.I. Joe's. Joe's. But yeah. you didn't keep going to see, like, because the, like, it gets super cool. I know. I assume it does. But I you should, couldn't do I it. You couldn't go back. I you were just, just like, it. I can't. No, I hung up and I called my mom and I was like, you, you would really have thought of that? You didn't know? No, I think I knew that my grandpa had probably wanted that. Mm -hmm. But not that it was ever like really up for debate. Oh, my gosh. What a fascinating thing to think about as the person... Yeah. about whom that's being considered yeah. who is now here today with a vibrant life and a loving mom and an incredible story and what a what a strange reality to walk through yeah yeah i did want to call my grandpa and be like um I, I am your only normal <laughs> grandchild so <laughs> hate to break it to you but well you need wow. to finish listening to it because i think everybody that listens to it has the same reaction that you did which is damn she's yeah. amazing uh -huh. uh, which is exactly what I thought before you did it and more so after you did it. And uh, I think you'll really And she's it. pretty amazing too. Uh, I get that yeah. sense. I, it's already pretty detectable. <laughs> I, I think someone, so. the one thread I see with you two is you have this attitude that comes out in the podcast of like, you're not allowed to tell me whether or not I'm going to be successful. Like I get to tell myself that. And I see that in you as well, where you're just like, I'll just fight for what I want. Like I'm, you're, you've been kind of a constant, you plug away. It's not that you don't want to quit it's stuff, but um, because I'm sure you have those feelings, but you just keep going back after it. Yeah. I mean, I like, I don't like to take no for an answer, but I probably have a little bit more of an attitude. <laughs> she definitely has things. more of an attitude <laughs> than I do. Uh, all right. But so per it's capita, been a lot of fun to work together. Does uh -huh. she have more attitude per capita? In other words, you were her age. Do you see a lot of yourself in her attitude or her perspective? Or were you quite a bit different? We are the same in a lot of ways and we're different in a lot of ways i feel like aiden came out of the womb with her fists up mm -hmm. she's always been like that where one of the things that you'll say to me dealing with clients or dealing with people in our personal life is why do you always have to be so nice <laughs> i did send the nicest email to one of the meanest clients to... uh -huh. <laughs> yes she takes that from me, but I think you've been more forceful outwardly in a lot of ways where I've been more forceful inward because I have more life experience. I've I had and we're so different because at Aiden's age, I had Aiden. Mm. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah. 
Yeah. You're, I, I can't not go here just because I, every time I get a guest in here with ADHD, I have to bring it up, but you are different in that you've dealt with ADHD. How early did you know that this was a thing? I just thought she was difficult. Oh, really? In middle school, middle school or elementary, elementary school. Elementary school was okay until oh, fifth middle or school. sixth grade. And then we started to have problems. In middle school, I got, in, my mom got a phone call every week of me being in the principal. I was Every friends with week. I was friends Every with week. the vice principal. I would rather be there than in class. Like you know. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um that's when I, there started to become a problem. I got in like some big trouble. Like but not because I remember so clearly it was math class. I can't remember the teacher's name. Mine must have been like 7th grade or 8th grade maybe. And I actually got moved to a different math class. Oh, was that the math teacher that quit? after having you but look not because <laughs> i here's the problem this i poor got... first year middle school math teacher just looks terrified and she just mr abe absolutely oh destroyed okay man. you go i it i did not destroy him he got upset with me because the problem was i was able to get my stuff done and get it done really quickly mm -hmm. and then i would talk to people around me mm -hmm. and possibly distract them from what they were doing and then I would get in trouble. But I'm like, I did what I had to do. Like, give me a harder worksheet, I guess. I don't know. Not my fault they're slow. And then I may have, like, gotten really upset because he told me that I was in trouble and slammed my chair that went flying. And then... You slammed your chair. She had straight A's and was consistently getting kicked out of every single class. Yeah. Or at a certain point, she started removing herself from a class. She'd just throw her chair mm -hmm. against the desk and walk out the door. So that's impulsivity, like, right? So one of the things ADHD is that we don't talk enough about with ADHD is this impulsive behavior. Like, this feels good or this is what I'm going to do. And, and you don't think necessarily about... How might this impact everybody around me and, all, and my parents and like all that stuff? You're just like, nope, this is what's happening and this is me right now. And it sounds like that really was yeah, at the forefront of your ADHD was just, yeah. I mean, I did my stuff and you want to tell me I'm in trouble and I, I don't know why I'm in trouble. I did what I needed to do. So, And as a parent, especially of a girl, because with boys, I feel that there's behavioral issues and it goes directly to ADHD, yeah. ADD. Yeah. Let's go get you tested. Right. Well, number one, I was a single parent. Number two, yeah. I was the parent of a girl. And the automatic was, this is a behavioral issue and you are doing something wrong in your home, obviously. Oh, wow. Whoa. And so that was on my end, ADHD was never even brought up. I remember asking in eighth grade, seventh grade, I didn't ask. Eighth grade, I remember asking, is this maybe something other than behavioral issues? Absolutely no. No nope, oh behavioral. Gosh. I looked at pulling her out of public school at the end of seventh grade because I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm a single parent and I'm working at the time on a team as mm -hmm. a, as an, a loan officer assistant, I'm busy. Mm -hmm. And I really, because, because there were a lot of traumas surrounding growing up, I also thought it must be behavioral because that's what I was told. We did no testing. There was no go to a counselor. But it's so funny you say that because even now I'm like, I would never say there's traumas around me growing up. I mean, like, mm. if I talked to a counselor, they'd probably be like, oh, you've been through some traumatic things. We'd be like, mm. I mean, whatever. Like, you didn't have on a, with the next. You <laughs> didn't have a dad. You had a big chip on your shoulder. Yeah. But, like, whatever. It's so interesting that it wasn't a... Like, people think ADHD is a brain problem. Like, we, we all do bad in school, but actually many do well in school. And if they're picked up and, like, if somebody would have said, wow, my gosh, you finish it that fast, like, let's elevate you. Like, let's figure well, out. Well, and that's what I wanted. I yeah. wanted to be like, oh, my gosh, look, Aiden did good. Like, yeah, she might be interrupting someone right now, but, like, she got all her stuff done. Mm -hmm. I'm like, where's my praise? And so to the your credit, if they had that. challenged you more, no you might have been more yeah. preoccupied and less disruptive. Exactly. Right. The but focus then, wasn't on the great stuff. It was on the, the negatives good. as a yeah. teacher saw it. Exactly. Except for a few teachers. There was some that didn't give up. 
You mentioned you were the best friend of the vice principal. Were you, is that real? Like, were you good oh at gosh, making like, friends? And I can make friends. Even when I was younger, I was always good at making friends. I may have always chose to hung, hang out with the people that also caused trouble and did stupid things, but. It's so, the identity of, some, so I'm huge into identity, right? Who do I see myself, myself as? What's my image of myself, right? And you throw yourself into this identity of people who cause trouble because you were listed as, if they put a list together of those who cause trouble, you're at the top I'm of that the, list. Yeah. But you only cause trouble when you weren't engaged in what you were doing. And so then you look at, okay, well, there's other kids who cause trouble for totally different reasons, have totally different issues, and yet you're putting yourself in that category instead of putting yourself in the category of, oh, these are the kids that are wicked smart. Th that wasn't your crew. Well, and I mean, like, I agree with that, but then you get to high school and it completely flip-flops where I wasn't the wicked smart one. I did end up in private school. I remember showing up in my first religion class and there was a scavenger hunt in the Bible and I didn't even know where the page numbers were. So I came home <laughs> to my mom pissed. <laughs> like, really? You couldn't even... You sent me to the school and you couldn't even tell me where the page numbers were. I lost the scavenger hunt very badly. I sense you're kind of competitive. Yeah, definitely. But high school, I mean, everything switched. Like middle school, I was getting in trouble because I was getting things done and had all this time mm -hmm. to mess around. High school came and I was getting in trouble because... I wasn't doing the work because it was so much more than anything I had ever seen. Mm. Like I was getting D's but we in did, physics. It it took a long time. It took me There was a diagnosis senior year in high school. Mm. I self prescribed myself throughout high school mm. from other people's Adderall and Vivans. So when you really? took it, were you like, wait, this makes me feel actually Well, I was I am prescribed 35s as of now. When I was in high school, I had a friend who would give me her 50s. 50s? And I was like, oh my gosh, I made this whole entire list. Here's everything I'm late on. Went to teachers and is, I'm like, I need help catch up. And then, you know, I didn't have it every day because it wasn't my prescription. So then like two days later, I'd be like, oh my gosh, why did I tell my teacher I haven't read my book? Like now I have all these appointments and... Yeah, I didn't wow. want to go to them after that or all was. Did you know all off. that? No, wow. not at the time. I know that. Now. Did you notice the difference in her? I not really, because I think it would be so much an individual day. I would notice wear on an individual day too. she decided to get on top of things and get it under control. Or when I um, skipped I used myself from school and you snitched on me and I was <gasps> at Starbucks <laughs> doing You're my parents. <laughs> It's done her look. Skippy's I off. I got Adderall from a friend that day, and I had another friend I played soccer with write me a letter excusing me, and I dropped it off to the front desk lady, and I was like, I have to go. I have I'm gone for the day, and I went home. And then I got home, and I was like, Ooh, if my mom comes home, I'm screwed. So I you guys my... have a back door. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, but my, I drove a car. So I was oh, like, oh, my mom's right. gonna see my car. So I dropped my lunchbox off, which I shouldn't have done. And then I went to Starbucks to catch up on everything I was behind on. And my mom called me while I was sitting at Starbucks. And I was like, oh, I'm not gonna answer. I'm just gonna keep working. And then instead of texting me or I don't know, she called the school and is like, where's Aiden? Wow. And the school's like, you excused Aiden. And, and what did you, were you like, yes, I did, and I'll cover for her? No, were you no, like, I no, did. I pissed. No, Whoa. I didn't. And, and the only what? reason I was home during the middle of the day is because you know how hard I work to build my business. Right. And I never took any free time at all. And I was taking half a day and going snowboarding, which I, of course, didn't tell her because it wasn't any of her business that I was going <laughs> snowboarding. So I'd come home to grab my snowboarding gear and throw it in the car. And then we got to have an appointment with Cinder Sister Linda, and I got suspended. And this then, is so fascinating. Is, this is incredible. And then I got suspended, and you took me to go get my nails done. 
Uh-oh. And so I was like, oh, whatever. That's some strict punishment <laughs> right oh there, Mom. That's doing hard time. <laughs> yeah. Also, not part of, you know, where the podcast needs to go, but <laughs> why do schools suspend somebody for skipping school? Yeah. Yeah. yeah great question. It is kind it, of a I reward. I really counterintuitive. Completely counterintuitive. Made sense to me. Right. Yeah. I mean, I got what I wanted. This is so fascinating for me because my son worked with me for a hot minute. He didn't work for me because I was like an area or regional, whatever I was. And he came in as an LOA to learn the business and work with a branch manager and a couple loan officers. And he lasted about a year and hated it and then went and got his series 66 or whatever. He now works mm-hmm. for Fisher and is crushing it, having a great career and loves it. He didn't love the mortgage business, but it makes me wonder what it would have been like because he and I are quite different. It makes me wonder what we, it would have been like had we actually worked together. Now, you guys, we haven't gotten the part of the story where you work together yet, but since I know that you do, I'm just sitting here fascinated by this dialogue and wondering what my, my story would have been like mm-hmm. had we directly worked together. Mm-hmm. Well, Working think, together was tough that, to well, start. And there's the part where Aiden got an ADHD diagnosis before high school ended, and then some things changed, and she was an adult by then. She was 18 started taking some medication, Mm -hmm. went off to a first year of college. But I think truthfully, the the only reason I chose to go to college, which I only applied to two schools, which were both in Hawaii. I don't know. There was no thought process around like maybe I should apply to one near home, not be stuck on an island. Um, but I really think the only reason I applied is because I went to St. Mary's and that's what everyone was doing. Mm. And if you didn't go to college, like, what were you going to do with it's your life? It's a college life? prep academy. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So that was the expectation. Yeah. You're going to throw your life away. And, and if you don't. College didn't work well. College was horrible. And you stopped taking your medication. You decided you didn't need it. I don't remember that. And took, took a job. Just so ADHD takes a job because she decides she needs to have enough money to go do things and she doesn't and then takes a second job working graveyard shift at a gym at that point I'm becoming concerned and then on top of that decides she doesn't need to take her medication and I at this point know we're gonna have a major problem well because my graveyard shift ended at six and I had a 9 a.m class every day but I was like I don't need to Writing 101. And then becomes incredibly defensive and lashes out at everyone because she's not taking any medication. Or getting much sleep. I feel like she still snitches on you. I mean, this is a pattern. And then (laughs) I did. Yeah, I mean. And then it crashed and burned badly. Yeah. I did go to. So I went to Hawaii Pacific. I lasted one Mm. semester. I honestly chose Hawaii Pacific over UH because there was air conditioning and nicer dorms. And they were on the water. Um, I went there with a friend, like a girl I played soccer with. We shared a dorm room. We are not friends anymore. Things, we'll just leave it at, there was a big crash and Mm. burn. And then you came home and you can tell them. I told my mom I wanted to come home, that I was dropping out of college. And she said, okay. You have two weeks at home, and then you need to be out of my house. Mind the fact, this is the first semester of college, so I'm coming home for Christmas. Mm. And I need to find a place to stay. And I have no money because I'm working and I'm spending it on fun things. And, yeah, so I moved home. And then, because I had to move out... I moved in with my boyfriend. We got an apartment together and that went horrible. Wow. <laughs> so, okay. All this leading up to her coming to work for me oh my eventually gosh. here. Well, and we should say Aiden's 24. She's almost 25. And that was at 19, 20 years old that a lot of that was happening. Yeah. So uh, I had just turned 19 when I dropped out. I moved home within two weeks I moved into the not-so-nice apartments across the street from Clackamas Town Center, and I lived there with my boyfriend and his cousin, and it was fine for a little. I have always been somebody who, like, I I can take care of things. Like, I will cook dinner, I will clean the house, I will do the laundry, I will do all those things, and I think part of that is because my mom was so busy when I was younger 
I was teaching myself how to do things and mm-hmm. cook and make sure that I had things done to an extent. I probably wasn't cleaning the house. Um, <laughs> so I was like the only one taking care of things. And then I had gotten a job at, did I get a job at Orange Theory first or at BlackRock first? I think BlackRock, but then Orange Theory is where Aiden really started to turn a corner in she found her spot and and in customer service i would walk into orange theory and she would be dialing and i'd listen to her dialing customers and and then be there was a wow moment for me and i thought oh wow because i am competitive Mm -hmm. and everyone else is dialing and i'm like well you guys are just doing the bare minimum i'm gonna beat you well and you're in an environment of competitive people the whole the whole vibe is is competitive get yourself better make yourself better be better and And Things were going really well. I had moved out of the apartment. I had gotten fired from BlackRock, but I still had the Orange Theory job. I moved into an apartment by myself for a while and then had made really good friends and found a really good group of people at Orange Theory who were working out and... Found your groove. I found, I your, wanna, people, found your groove. I want to ask about the adult. working out because were you working out when you were in Hawaii? I, you could say I was, no, you, okay. nah. Working out is a huge People part forget of working life. out for kids with ADHD. Working out is one of the things yeah. that you can, along with medication, working out is like amazing. And so and you I, operate at a better level when you're in a workout routine. In, a, in Hawaii, I mean, I worked at a gym, so I had access to work out. Mm-hmm. Working out alone is not the same as working out with people. Right. So like, yeah, I was probably lifting some weights here and there, mm-hmm. but, but you never... were religious about it. You have been religious about working out since you worked at Orange Theory. Yeah. Since so, I worked at Orange Theory, I've always. Like... Huge lesson for people listening. Your life changes based on your workout routine sometimes. Like you, you became more successful when workout became part of your routine and people without ADHD, it workouts great for everybody, but for those with ADHD, workout does help you be higher functioning. It clears yeah. your brain, it gives you that. Um, it's like the one hour of my day where my brain is not jumping all mm-hmm. around. I'm literally just focused on what I'm there for. And yeah. that like, people can say like, oh, it's so easy to focus and stuff. But yeah, for someone with ADHD, like, Oh my gosh, even when I'm having a conversation with just some normal person, I'm like, oh my, I really need to interrupt you. I have 10 things popping around <laughs> in my brain. But well, at the also, gym, that's the one spot. It's also the notion that if you pull that back to the 40,000 foot view, it's it's the, the you found your tribe or you found your environment. Maybe it wasn't exactly mm-hmm. your tribe, like people you just hung with, but they were all competitive. But you found an environment that resonated with you mm-hmm. and, and not just... Uh, a job, a BlackRock or or whatever. You found yeah. you found something well, that resonated. Well, she was really, really thriving, finally. And then COVID happened. Yeah. Oh, boy. There's COVID. some timing. And I at the point of COVID hitting, I was the assistant manager at Orange Theory. So I was like, I was doing good. I was living in a house with two friends of mine. One of them was my manager at Orange Theory, and she had a boyfriend, so she was never there. And the other girl, we were really close. And then COVID hit, and I was getting paid to, like, send out emails that took, like, an hour in the morning. And some of my best guy friends lived down the street, and we drank all day long, all the time, smoked a lot of weed. This is your pod. Like, as everybody kind of potted up, this is your this was my pod. pod of people. COVID was so hard on that early 20s. Yeah. Oh, boy. And then I social, would say... Just getting social adult yeah. life down. I would say a few months into COVID, I was like, oh, shit. I'm not doing good. Um, Like... Honestly, I never really like to say, like, oh, I'm depressed. But honestly... I was depressed. I wasn't doing anything good for myself. And you recognized it. And I I think with the help of you. We did have a moment one day on the back patio where I realized you weren't in good shape. I mean, dude, I was like mixing water bottles with a with a fifth of vodka and Mio and like shaking it up and what's Mio? Is that like, like this, the Mio, like you're asking me flavor, I think flavor, it's flavor. that you would usually oh, just put okay. in water and oh, we would like wow. mix it all together and be like, whoop, party in the backyard. 
And I had to have been 20. My birthday, my 21st birthday was in COVID. And that had to have been mm-hmm. the summer before I turned 21. And then... And then a corner turned. A corner turned. I started working out with two of the... I have a friend, Tanya, that didn't live far from me. And then a really good friend, Amber, who lived across the street from me throughout COVID. And they're both older than me. And I think I really turned to them. And they, like... We're like, okay, Aiden, like, let's work out. Let's do some healthy things. Let's go on walks together. And then Orange Theory demoted me and was like, we want you to do all the things you're doing for way less money. And I was like, wow, that really sucks. So I wrote a cover letter and I created a resume and I sent it to my mom's whole entire team without telling my mom. (laughs) No way. <laughs> Why you should hire me. Wow. Yeah. Like, just out of the blue. I was like, oh, why not? I've listened to her my whole entire life. I've got to know something about this. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a confidence that I know where that comes from. And not an arrogance or a cockiness. Just mm-hmm. a confidence of being okay with who I am. And if you're not, whatever. But I'm okay with who I am. But there's also a self-awareness that you seem to have had at a pretty young age. And maybe you wouldn't have identified it as that. But there seems to be a self-awareness. You, you're, you're finding where you're tripping. You might not be fixing it in a really effective way, but you're recognizing where I'm tripping or stumbling or, or not living my best life. And you're finding ways to move in different directions. That's that's pretty amazing considering your age. Thanks. I think part of it, as much as I love you, is like I didn't want my early 20s to be like yours. Yeah. My early 20s were hard. If anyone mm-hmm. listens to that first podcast, I go did, back and listen to that podcast. My my early twenties were incredibly difficult. And like, I have a great life, and that is because of you. But there, I mean, you're right. There were definitely times that were not fun at all. <laughs> I'll no. second that. <laughs> yeah. Well, what a cool that, thing to learn from, though, is yeah. is your mom's past, which is the past and 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 your life is what it is today in part because of your past and you haven't resisted that you've just said all of this is who i am and i i embrace it mm-hmm. and and for you to recognize that that's a place i don't want to go uh i i think i experienced that my dad had some issues and i grew up mm-hmm. in an environment like that and i decided very early on that when i become a parent i'm not going to be there's a lot of about him that was great but that part I'm not gonna I'm not gonna repeat, and I didn't, and yeah. it was because that negative uh, example was so powerful to me, and it just resonated so strongly that I became a different person and a different parent as a result of it. If you are watching this podcast and you're in the mortgage industry and you haven't checked out the Knowledge Coop, you definitely need to dive into the Knowledge Coop. In there, you will find content and community that will help you grow as an individual by learning everything there is to know about the mortgage industry. If you think you know everything, just dive in and take some classes because there's always something more you can learn. To be successful in this business, you've got to continually learn. In addition, if you're a company and you want to teach your people in your own environment, we've got that in the Knowledge Coop Enterprise Services. So reach out to us, check out knowledgecoop.com. Definitely join Coop Plus. Let's get back to the podcast. You know, when you're watching a movie and the character's like really spiraling out of control and you're like, have that moment, like have the moment where you like wake (laughs) up and realize I feel like watching your childhood was like, come on, baby, like bring me that moment where you wake up. Was your that thought of like I don't want to I don't want to have to go through what my mom went through? Was that like a a day that you felt it, or was it over time of going okay? Like it was kind of in the back of your mind, and then one day you're like I'm just gonna get out of this lifestyle. Definitely in the back of my mind. I mean, there was 13 years of my life where I really did not like somebody that was in my mom's life. Hmm. Even more years than that, probably. We didn't either. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So I think for a long time, it was like, whatever that is, that is nothing I ever want. Mm. Um, And even further back than that, like, I can't tell you the last time I've ever seen my mom. I don't think I can recall seeing my mom and dad ever talk. Mm. Like, I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen you and him talk. And that is another thing where I'm like, I mean, it is what it is. Life's life. But I don't want that mm-hmm. for myself or my kids someday. It's important to point out because I 
I know there's two ways you can go as a kid, right? If your if your parents had a rough go at it, you can either create just kind of follow that legacy and be like, well, I guess that's who I am because my mom struggled with these things. Yeah. I'll just struggle with these things. Or I see that and that's not something that I want. And so I'm going to go a different direction. The strength it takes to be that side, because you have every excuse to be like, oh, didn't have a dad growing up. Like you could just lay out the excuses, excuses and nobody would blame you for screwing up. Right. You'd be like, see, this is why I am what I am. But that power and we see this in like my dad is the same way, struggled all through his, you know, never had a dad that didn't beat him. So for you, you know, like my dad, you're just like, I'm never going to go through this. And I've chosen something different for myself. So I just want to call you out for being just a powerhouse and not using the excuse that that you totally could have used. I mean, like I get people use those excuses. That drives me crazy. Like, well, I do have to jump in and say, even when she was younger, she would tell me, I'm not going to be like you. I'm mm. going to get married and have a big wedding wow <laughs> just little but little sass. but i don't think that <laughs> i don't oh that hasn't gone away because after she came to work for me and now and now we're now we're you are getting there we are getting there <laughs> but when she came to work for me at one point she said to me i'm gonna be a bigger deal than you are and oh my like, gosh have at it sister like knock yourself out you Please. need a battle to fight right yeah. you kind of need a battle to fight you need to that's also another adhd thing is like i get bored if i don't have a battle right now so i, I have mean, to be winning how many rhinos do you have <laughs> what's a rhino how many do you have i i just have one from coaching i have two what's a rhino <laughs> a rhino is in coaching at guild our, our coach our guild coaching program uh -huh. the award at the end of each semester is called the rhino and, and each best. coach oh, wow. picks their rhino every semester it's a huge thing to strive for oh my gosh and i've and never been a good and student. she's been in coaching for how many semesters two and i have and two you're rhinos. two for two <laughs> oh my gosh so so when you when you walked into the front room, you were walking in the door, you'd already been here, and I'd never met you before, and I'd obviously met you before. When you walked into my vision, I immediately thought of your mom. And then I saw your face, and obviously you're younger, but in that side vision, there's just such a striking resemblance between the two of you. And then sitting here in studio, the striking resemblance is strength. Mm -hmm. You exude strength and compassion and empathy mm -hmm. and all kinds of other great virtues, but strength is one of your virtues and you exude that. So whatever else you saw in your mom that might have been desirable to avoid, what you gained from that experience was this incredible resilience and strength. Mm -hmm. And it's just so obvious for both of you. It's profoundly obvious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. So yeah. you... <clears throat> Let's get into this because I was I was definitely um, I'm sure seeing videos from your mom, you know, her Hayden and I have our video connection as you were trying to pass your NMLS test. So you get into the business and now you just have to be a loan officer. And as a loan officer, of course, you have to pass the test to be a loan officer. <clears throat> we ADHD kids don't necessarily do great on tests. And so how'd that go? So it took me two years <laughs> about to find the confidence to decide to take the test. Really? I was a transaction coordinator for my mom for the first two years, which I think was good and bad at the same time. Because then I'm like, I'm really good at my job. This test, I'm gonna be able to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Like I can do my job. I understand everything on the back end, like I've got it down. I took the knowledge cube pre-licensing course, my 20 I think hours. You did. Did you do that in the beginning or did you did pros? You, you did something else first. You used somebody else. Yeah. You did. I got called That's why in you later. Struggled. Yes. Yeah. But I did it twice. I've done the knowledge group. Yes. Group but, 20 but you hours did twice. something else first. Yeah. Okay. So I did, I, I think I did both though before I took a test because I remember doing my 20 hour pre licensing that I was required to do. Ken didn't have it in the beginning when yeah. she first, yeah. when she first started mm -hmm. the path to it you didn't have the pre-licensing right. yet we were working on it okay so i so i did take my pre-licensing and then i waited a few months and i was like okay i'm gonna take the test and i did horrible literally 
I don't even want to know what I got. I don't even, I got kicked out within like minutes probably. Um, but also no one tells you when you're getting ready for the test that you have to sit in this muggy, gross test center mm. in front of this computer that's from the 1900s and wear these headphones that I've never seen in my life. And not to mention answer questions that in large part have nothing to do with the real job that you're exactly. doing. Exactly. Right. Well, mm -hmm. and they're like, before you go in, let me check behind your ears, pull up your pants, <laughs> pull your <laughs> sleeves up, take your jewelry. I'm like, I don't take this jewelry off. What do you mean <laughs> take my jewelry off? Failed it horribly, cried about it. I was like, I'm done. This isn't meant for me. It's fine. And then, so first time you fail, you have to wait three months or 30 days. Three and then months, I, and then you took days. it again. And I took it again and I failed again. And I was like, oh my God. I think you may horrible. have taken it a third time before. And the third time I took it, at, once you fail the third time, you have to wait six months. So the third time I took right. it, I'm like, it's over with. I really am not capable of this. Um, is that when I got the tattoo on my thumb? I think the third time? No. Fourth time? No. Fifth time? <laughs> Somewhere, I think maybe the... So we failed i failed three times and then you and then you six months go by and then you had the pre-licensing mm -hmm. and it was an interactive course mm -hmm. also so i so i waited my six months and i was by now i'm like okay this is and you still have a job you're still transaction still coordinator. you can't originate loans but yet, i think but... on my end i'm thinking well, okay maybe loans are not right. the thing for aiden mm -hmm. maybe and that was a rough part of us working together that time period and it would make me so mad because i'm studying for this damn test and my mom is a really well-known high producing loan officer and i'm trying to ask for help studying and she can't answer the questions and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> great <laughs> but i couldn't answer her uh, math questions in high school either i'd be like yeah. i don't know google it right and I, because the test doesn't necessarily test doesn't, measure what right, it takes yeah, to be a really right, successful yeah, totally. high right. loan officer and so yeah. you came and did ken's course i remember after Ken's course, you taking the test and failing it yet again. So that was probably the fourth time. And Ken was so shocked. And I can't remember who was teaching the class. They couldn't believe it because in that class, verbally, you were able mm -hmm. to know all the answers. Well, and that was probably the most and frustrating. And I think that's important, that verbal mm -hmm. piece. That was probably the most frustrating part is that I feel that if that test had been offered verbally, mm -hmm. I probably could have passed mm, it with flying colors. Yeah. Um, I think after the fourth time is when I went to Jay's Bar and Grill on 82nd and I took two tequila shots and then I went home and then I had my friend tattoo a dollar sign on my thumb and I'm like, I'm not making any more money, but sure, but a dollar What was sign. the dollar sign about? Like why a dollar Literally sign on your thumb? Literally just reckless. Like, I don't, I have no clue. I've tried to think about that before because I'm like, it's not like I am making more money, you know, like... It was awesome because then she tried to hide it from me. Yeah, I would like her walk around like So this. she could never tell you she was happy. She's like, uh, no thumbs ups. <laughs> I finally noticed this like crude stick and poke dollar sign on her oh thumb. Oh my gosh, that impulsivity I was like, though. You cannot work for me and have that on your thumb. Yeah. Well, and you know, like most loan officers are older and you shake with your right hand and I'm just mm -hmm. walking up to all these there it is. older loan Just so you know, I'm all about money. <laughs> There you you make a lot more money than me, but nice to meet you. Well, so I want to pause for a second because the thing is that you mentioned if it would have been verbal. So we now have in schools a better way of, of handling ADHD kids. Like there's there's different things that you can get. You can get a little bit more time on stuff. But Aiden's allowed to stand up during yeah, classes her yeah. senior year, which was a huge difference. Right. She needed to be able Movement. to move. Yep. But then once you get into the, quote, real world, you there's now no. have the NMLS that's like, no, we, we're not going to give you any sort of accommodations. There's a guy named Russell Barkley that if you haven't listened to Russell Barkley, you have to listen to him. He's the most well-researched ADHD expert in the world. He's written the books, so many books on ADHD. He has all the original research. on. He was an ADHD guy before ADHD was a thing. Like he always has, has studied, has all the reports and studies. And he gets so angry at stuff like this. Like if he heard well, this conversation, ridiculous. he'd be so mad because he's like, why are we doing this? Because now you can't work as a loan officer because of something that isn't your fault. It's something that's been, you know, that's in your brain and it could be solved. And even more than that, you know the stuff. Right. You proved you can answer it. It's not about it. whether you have It's not about knowledge, knowledge or capability. Yeah. And you know how to do the job because you're doing the job. Not completely, not a complete loan officer job, but you're in the business, doing the business, yeah. understanding what you're doing. And 
you get it when you do it verbally. Yeah. And then you got to go sit down with those skanky headphones on in a uh -huh. skanky little testing environment. And, and worse than and, DMV yeah. environment. And, and, you know, at that point, like, these people know me. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> hey, great. We're friends yeah. now. I got invited over for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Why didn't you quit? taking the test you did it six times What's... i think the fifth one was where i you know when your heart's just breaking for your own mm -hmm. child yeah and i when she failed the fifth time i was a little worried about what was going to happen next mm -hmm. i thought wow like any normal human being would have been would have given up mm -hmm. and i do have to say any normal person would have given up at that point and she didn't give up. And I think I felt, I felt worried about that. I felt, I was a little concerned. That maybe it was time Not to move on. Not about her working for me or taking yeah, over yeah. my business. Yeah, I know. Can I really give this one? I was actually just worried about my child. Yeah. And I, when you decided you were going to take the sick, test a sixth time, I, I think I was texting you mm -hmm. and Ken and, and. I was, I just knew when she went to go take it that sixth time, if she didn't pass it, like, she was probably done. I was oh, done. all hell would have broken loose. Like, we <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't throw a chair on the fifth time. Because you wait and then the thing comes that up and tells you. That was heartbreaking. The yeah. fifth time to me was just I re I did get a call on the fifth time because you your heart was broken and you were just like, what do I do? My kid's upset. I think, uh, um hard part of it or what probably made me not give up is like I don't want people to like if I'm going to do something I better figure out how to do it like mm -hmm. people were expecting that I was going to be a loan officer and I'm like okay well I'm going to figure it out like I didn't want particularly people that we worked very close with on our team um, I didn't want them to think differently of me. I think that was a huge part of it. Was part of it that your mom, did you think about how you were making your mom look? Like I think about our kids in their work, like, oh gosh, you know, I'm the kid of this successful person. I can't screw up. Like I got to make sure I do this right. Uh, a little bit. Like, nah, my mom's uh, <laughs> I mean, most of the people she works with love me. So it's like. Nice. They would have loved me either way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the main difference about the sixth, so sixth time I took it, it was like, all right, you're going to pass or you're going to have to wait another six months and who knows what's going to happen. I did not tell people that I was taking the test. I just scheduled oh, wow. it. And no one knew when I was taking Had it. Had you told them the other five times? Yes. Okay. Even my mom, I think you knew eventually because... I was like, I'm going to the beach. I need the day off. And everyone's I like, knew. what are you doing going I to knew. the beach? Right. But no one really questioned it. Like, right. regardless if they knew or not, it was just like, I'm going to go to the beach. Um, I'll be back. And I had retaken the 20-hour pre-licensing course right before it. Again. Mm -hmm. I didn't go in the float pod but i went to sweat house and sat in a sauna like the night before and i was listening to affinity mortgage every night going to sleep because i'm like my brain will retain something from this ongoing youtube <laughs> um and i got there early and i did my flashcards and i was like honestly like i've taken the test six times these questions i've seen at this point like mm -hmm. i've got to be i've got to be able to do it and and if i don't well it's gonna be a really shitty day <laughs> so i went in and it i it's so hard right because everyone's like oh you know like take your time read the questions slow flag the ones you don't know go back everyone has different input for tests and i was like i'm going with my gut i'm clicking and i'm going and then I would look how many I had flagged and I was like, okay, well, I can only have this many flagged. So I have to feel confident on all these other ones. And I had time left. I didn't take a break that time. The other times I had taken breaks throughout the test. Um, and then it was finally time to submit it, but I had a lot of time left and I was like, oh my God, do I look at them all again? <laughs> I was like, I'm not even going to look at them. I'm not even going to look at the ones I flagged. I'm just going to go for it. I'm close. 
and I like submitted it and I'm sitting there and you know it it takes so it, it feels takes, like a year yeah <laughs> forever it's an eternity here, especially like, when you've not been successful five yes, times I'm yeah. over here like oh my gosh and then it popped up on the screen and you need a 75 to pass and it popped up and it said 76 and I was like oh this I I wanted to cry wow how perfect yeah. I wanted to cry I like got up and I grabbed my stuff and I was they hand me my piece of paper and I went outside and I called my mom and I was like I was sobbing. I'm like, I I did it. I'll have to do this ever again. Like, don't ever put me in that testing room ever. Wow. What an incredible story. And then I had my license. Before and we started rolling, we talked about the way I rephrase what lessons is last time is about is about getting back up. Mm -hmm. And I can't think of a better illustration of getting yeah. back up and getting back up and getting back. At some point, your pride gets involved, oh. not to get the test done, but to go, Oh, I'm I'm stuck at this test taking, right? Oh, Maybe I'm not meant to be a loan officer or so whatever. So many times, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But 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 even in that, not thinking, it's like, all right, I'm getting back up, dusting myself off, and we're gonna do this one more time. Mm -hmm. but it's and funny. last time, I'm not telling anybody. I'm just gonna go yeah. do it. A massive amount of perseverance. It's really? funny though because yeah. you guys are saying that, and like when all that was going on, I even now until you really just said that, I'm like, yeah, I just that was. The option I had, mm -hmm. it was like, you're going to do it or you're not. So I just figured out how to do it, I guess. I will say this. We've had a lot of people in this room and we talked about a lot of challenges in life and you can't, you can't weigh them out. I mean, they're all, mm -hmm. everybody's challenges are incredible and difficult, especially for them because it's what they went through. But I don't think I've ever heard a better recounting of the concept of get back up and lessons from mm -hmm. last night. That's just a powerful statement of grit and resolve and determination and Finding a way forward, even when you've been getting your ass kicked. Yeah. Yeah, it sucked. And then I got <laughs> licensed. And then I got licensed and it, I was like, okay, I'm ready to go build my business. Like, my mom's so good at coaching other loan officers. She's going to help me so much. And, and she bought a van. And, <laughs> and, well, she bought a van. She replaced me with a golden retriever. And she's so like. So sweet, though. That golden really retriever. cute golden retriever. Yeah. Yes. He's my sibling. Um, so he's the favorite I child. almost brought him today. But oh the my gosh. other thing is, and you coach at Guild. Like, you're great at coaching other loan officers. But when I was like, how did you do it? Your answer to me was, I don't know. I just did it. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, the gems she was dropping on you right yeah, there. So helpful. And you so... should get the coaching. <laughs> well, it was for different reasons with me because I was whatever that area regional manager. My son worked for me technically, but not directly. But I didn't want to coach him. I didn't want to show that it wasn't on a team. You coaching her. I have never been good at teaching her things. Our personality mm. differences, or actually, probably more our personality similarities have always made it incredibly difficult. I mean, even when I ask for help, then I get mad that she's helping me. I'm like, that's not the way I want to do it. I don't know why you're <laughs> yeah, me way. helping her or trying to show her how to do something. Mm -hmm. I, you, we were talking about what to talk about on this. And I said, oh, if you want to see us argue and you just missed it 20 minutes ago, you know, <laughs> had a, a mic on her when she was sitting in your office because I was telling you how to do something. And when I tell you how to do something, you get irritated with me because you... That is a different story, though, because the email <laughs> I originally sent was the correct one. And you told me it was wrong, so I sent another one. And now I have to send another one. Yeah, okay. I was going to sure. say this exactly mirrors my experience. I didn't want to coach my son or, or train my son. My reason was I don't want to, as an area or regional or whatever, I don't want to play favorites. I don't want to appear like I'm... And I want him to learn the business from somebody who's in it doing it. But the real reason was I know my son and I know me and I know how it would have worked because it would have worked just uh -huh. like that. The amazing thing is about having Aiden work as a loan officer now is how much I, my agents that I have or my referral partners, how much they love working with Aiden. And some of them even more than they, it's hard for me to say, maybe even more than You're they You're so excited about this, what's about to happen here, but what? <laughs> Right. They like her what? But they <laughs> started sending their business to me. Wow. Aiden is incredibly charismatic. I took no, Aiden on a really? president's <laughs> club. I took Aiden on a president's club trip with me. Uh, the first one after COVID, which mm. 
Wow. It people, got crazy. It got a little crazy. People had a little pent up. Several They've been years locked up of, for yeah, some yeah. Yeah. I feel yeah. really bad for anyone else that was at the resort that <laughs> we were at that particular weekend. Uh huh. And Aiden is with Barry Horn, VP of Guild, out on the beach. Like, I'm like, what is even happening? Aiden and Jim Smith are doing tequila shots with pickleback. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> It's like they're like, hey, it's amazing. And I'm like, uh, yeah, yes, she is amazing. She's also really difficult. Oh my god. So cool. like, okay. Yes. She's cool. <laughs> but I, that's been the, the the same thing as Aiden is now building business relationships. And that's the thing that I watch you do that you're so incredible at and that I really cheer you on about. We had one yesterday. Aiden is out grabbing. Co Aiden is better at meeting people. One of my dirty secrets in the mortgage industry uh, that you know, and I, you've probably heard me talk about, is I never meet people face to face like mm. you're supposed to. And I'm on the I'm And I, the feel, I built a huge business. Mm -hmm. You know, it felt it feels like a dirty secret because people are like, "Well, then how are you doing all this business?" Living in a van down by the river, and I live in my camper van, and and because that's always been the way I've done things, that that transition ended up working well. Mm -hmm. But Aiden is better than me at sales. At face to face, if you asked me to dial for dollars, I would be paralyzed. Do not mm. ask me Neither to pick one up that phone. Dial mm -hmm. for dollars. But I can do seven face to faces a week, easy. That's a, that's a blast. Which gets, flies people, in the face of what then... they say about the generations, right? Like yeah, generationally, really you should be the face to face. <laughs> you should be like, we should be using technology, <laughs> and you know, and yet you were like, I want to be in front of people. Yeah, interesting. And she has a serious reels game. My oh yeah yeah yeah. Social I think I've heard three requests for reels. Yeah, this is probably a reel right on now. We're on a reel. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I need a reel. I need to use it for a reel. Can <laughs> I have that? I need it for a reel. So sales wise, the her ability to go out and meet people and make a connection is is better than mine. It really is. What's well, been practiced ever since she was a She's little always kid. Had to go back to the vice principal story. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you knew how to make friends with people. I'm in trouble, but well, he likes me or she likes me. And, and I think part of that was being an only child. Part of that was having a young mom so no one else had kids. So the people mm -hmm. to hang out with, with was with adults. her friends. Right. And yeah, being independent. And like, I mean, I didn't have siblings. There was no one to like... I used to sit on the fence and stare at the neighbor kids play like, please invite me. Yeah. When for me at school, I knew I was going to get a bad grade. And so I better if I could make friends with a teacher, then they would feel bad about giving me a bad grade. And I could probably get a little There's bit better definitely grade. Definitely some of that yeah. going on for That her. was part of my, it's vice principal, like that guy can probably, you know, or that woman can probably, you know, kick me out of school. So better make friends with that person. And so my friendships got me through when my grades weren't getting me through. So that ability to that. create a connection yeah. and a relationship. That's how I built easily. my social skills is it yeah. out of necessity because my, what I thought was my brain, which actually, you know, my, my brain difference was causing it. I'm crazy smart, but you wouldn't know it if you looked at my grades because I didn't apply myself and do all the homework and all that stuff. So it's that friendship piece that got built at such a young age. And I think that's true of a lot of kids with ADHD is we learn to become friends with people because that's the only thing we've got. That's our tool. Yeah. But, it, and it's all face to face. Like, honestly, my friends, if they listen to this, they would be like, Aiden is a great friend in person, but like, I have like a week turn time on responding to personal text messages, <laughs> which is another similarity between you and Ken. I'm like, Ken, he's like, don't call text. So I text and then I just don't. I never I'm hear busy anything. doing other stuff like it's. Oh, it's true all the way around. Ken, the building's on fire. You should probably tell somebody else. I'm not going to tell him this, but I look at it and be like, I'm sure he's going to get that taken care of. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Unless like. That's so weird. He thinks yeah. I'm going to do something. I know. <laughs> so I'm not even going to read this. That was like my friends the other day. I don't use Snapchat very often, but I do have a group of high school girls who all are on Snapchat. 
um, and we have a group chat together, and I had been messaging, I had been texting one of them about booking a flight to go see them, and then a week later, I get on the Snapchat, and it's like, hey, Aiden, um, I saw your text, like, I'm gonna get back to you, I promise, and then my other friend Hannah's like, why did you just say that in Snapchat, like, she's going to see it, <laughs> like, she's not, and she, and they're right, I check it, well, maybe once a week, I have, like, 15 text messages to respond to right now Mm -hmm. but like i talk to people all day long what's your support team some boundaries i was gonna say i think there's some i had this conversation with someone else recently about how for myself one of the problems and one of the the burnout effects in the mortgage industry is this constant response yeah. constant response constant mm-hmm. response life in general ah yeah. constant response but for loan officers my age and older technology happened during our careers mm-hmm. right because when i started in the mortgage industry i was faxing off for a credit report mm-hmm. and then you stood there and waited for the credit report to come back and on the thin paper and then you try to pick up the pieces off the floor and put them in the right order uncurl it (laughs) yeah and technology happened to us during our careers Mm -hmm. and we don't have any boundaries because of it right but we've got another generation that and for aiden she I, i feel bad for kids now that have technology from the beginning for aiden technology was working seriously into her life, what, at middle school, Mm -hmm. sixth, seventh grade, right? But there are more boundaries or she appears to place more boundaries in a better way than I'm able to do it, Mm -hmm. both in her personal life and business, I think because they've always had the technology. Mm -hmm. Where for us, if I get a message, no matter where that message came in or Teams or something's beeping or buzzing, I immediately in responding and she to it can't multitask when she's responding to it i'm like <laughs> mom i was having a conversation with you but um okay yeah go ahead and re- think for five minutes while you text someone back and <laughs> well, this, ignore me this is observational it might not be true but you spend your energy connecting with people without experience them personally you built your business around not having to be sitting in front of a client or a realtor to get a successful relationship and build mm-hmm. that so you're not expending personal energy on the relationship and face to face. You're expending it on the system and the platform and the process. Well, and you- a ton of connecting with people one on one, but over the phone. But you know, there were probably a lot of reasons why that was a necessity. Sure. Because mm-hmm. there, there's reasons that I built my business that way. When you go back and look at it, right? Well, it's certainly I not because raising, you're not personable. Yeah. I was raising her. Exactly. I, there was not the time. To- there was not the time to go meet five people face to face in one day impossible it was impossible to have done that and be at soccer practice or pick her up or drop her off or do the things i had to do or make dinner or get her from school or get it it was not physically possible and so i found other ways to build my business and I, and it it's so funny because i fly by the seat of my pants i live in a camper van and so somehow people think i don't have systems and right. then when I look at what makes me a good loan officer and what makes me a good coach to others, I was systems, a lot of systems. Mm-hmm. Well, my observation about Aiden was she expends a lot of energy on the relationship face to face. If you, I'm a good friend in person, I kind of suck at returning text messages. So it's just interesting. There's so many parallels between the two of you. And then there's so many contrasts mm-hmm. that are fascinating to watch and it works. Yeah. And it's just really interesting to. So my hope is I built all these systems, and now I can be like I built this big thing here. Here right. I, I'd like yeah. to give this thing to you that I made that I don't know what to do with now. Which will be interesting to watch because yeah. if we go back to Orange Theory, I you had said, and I don't know if you caught your voice when you did it, but when you went, and then I was sending emails out. It was like your whole countenance changed. You went from like, and you're like. Then they made me, I was just sitting there sending emails. Like you need a job that makes you excited and like engaged. And if you just had to sit there sending emails all day, no, we have to keep the team in a way that allows Aiden to be out doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Now because Mm -hmm. of that, I feel like I'm really lucky because our LOA doubles as my best friend. Celia is like, 
queen of sitting behind a computer and answering all the emails and mm-hmm. she's an encyclopedia and she knows every answer to everything and if she doesn't her mom's head of underwriting and then mom's involved and that and she gets it she's never someone who's been like it's not fair you go to all these coffees and all these lunches and I have to sit here she's like I am not salesy I don't want to be salesy you're literally begging me to do content with you and fine I finally will do it but she's (laughs) She's happy sitting behind Mm -hmm. the computer and being the brains she's best that like you've got her working within her gifts not only do they make a great team one of the conversations as we've talked about them eventually taking things over is that I come from a world in that standard world and anyone listening is a loan officer makes the bulk of the income, Mm -hmm. right? And the people Mm -hmm. behind them make a lot less money. And one of the conversations that I had in the beginning with them was like, look, you both are going to need each other. There's no awesome salesperson without an awesome point Mm -hmm. person behind them. And the more equitable that can be, the more that you'll grow and and do more business and I think a lot more longevity mm-hmm. in Reten- that relationship. Yeah. Ret- retention. I mean, I've always told Celia, I'm like, when it's me, it's us. Like, I, I want to have a family. I want to have kids someday. Like, I need her to want to stay and work next to me forever. Like, mm-hmm. and she knows me and... Like she can handle my sass at times and attitude and. One of the really cool things about the mortgage business, we talked about this before we started rolling, is that the average age just a few years ago of loan officers was like 53 or 54, 55, which is really quite high when you think about it's an average. It's still very young though. It is still a young age. Yeah. Take, take my word on that. And that has, <laughs> because of COVID, because of the, post-COVID, the market changed and the market being so difficult for two years, a lot of people have gotten Retired. out. Some of the people who've gotten out are the ones who could mm-hmm. choose to retire. Mm-hmm. So the age is skewing downward now, and you are the future of the mortgage business. Mm-hmm. And I just think it's so exciting to sit here and see you talk about uh, equanimity as one of the things you want to define your business mm-hmm. by. And I think you'll find moving forward that that's a model that's really going to rock mm-hmm. uh, for both. It's a foreign the, concept it is, to the mortgage industry. Because but, those who yeah. are of that average age or older, it was, right. well, no, I'm king here. I'm the one that drives right. in all the I business. I make all the money. I'm the reason yeah. you're here. I'm you're the reason welcome. you got a job. Yeah. And, and to recognize that your success is so dependent on others and to honor that, that's the business model of the future, and it's the mindset of the I future. And they can both be so incredibly successful. Absolutely. And they need each other Well, to and make I it think work. that goes to an even further extent. I mean, I was talking to another loan officer the other day about a file of mine that I'm like, I don't know what to do with it. And I explained them to them the scenario, and they're like, oh, I would punt that. And I'm like, what? You would get <laughs> rid of this client? Like, no. I would way rather create a game. Like, I will... I can't take no for an answer. I have spent way too many hours she on She has files. blown me away with, like, making something work. I mean, we're talking, she's, like, seven-month yeah. cre- mm-hmm. credit plan, hey, 50 She took the test six times. Right. So she's like, certainly not giving up trying to find a way to get mm-hmm. someone into a house. That's so consistent with everything I've heard in this room for the last hour. It's also <laughs> consistent with I'm the ADHD not diagnosis because the justice thread runs deep with people with ADHD. Like, mm-hmm. we want to fight for others because we had to fight for ourselves so much. And so just going out and going, I'm not letting this bar work, you know, walk away. I'm not letting them, you know, fail because I've failed my past or I've been judged in my past and I'm going to fight for this one. So it's well, super consistent. Well, and it consistent. makes it so much more rewarding mm-hmm. when it finally happens. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that happened. I didn't even know that could run through AUS. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And people can feel that. And they when they feel yeah. like somebody's fighting for them, they don't have to go Google some, well, what are rates today? Because rates online aren't going to fight for people like you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's where a lot of people don't understand, like, why am I not making more money? And they want to just take some, you know, quick thing. Oh, it's probably this flyer. I'm going to send out these flyers or post these things. It's actuality. It's, it's who you are. And do people want to come back and do business with you? And that I will fight for you no matter what method just that running through your veins is is super connecting with people like that is very appealing to people that want to find a loan officer well it's awesome on my end to see her have this amazing ability to connect and create relationships to have salia behind her really being the mastermind more like my brain at setting loans up Mm -hmm. and 
know that the two of them can handle things. I am still a control freak. I am working on that. I'm getting better. You're a lot better when you're in the van. I'm a lot better when I'm in the van. <laughs> Anybody. I'm home right now in Portland. It's a little crazy. Anybody would be a lot better when they're in the van Very the limited amount Not of anybody. Time. I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't do love that. it. No. I would love it. <laughs> I, I had to use the... The compostable toilet when I visited. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Do you want to bring that to the podcast? <laughs> oh, my gosh. We're going in a different direction, though. <laughs> it what, was intense. Yeah. There are so many great stories here. And one of the great stories is um, the relationship between a mother and a daughter and what you've learned from mm -hmm. each other and how you've grown and how you've grown and how you've changed and how you've benefited from her strengths and her weaknesses or successes and failures, however you want to. I don't really think of them as failures, but you know what I mean. The obstacles Hurdles. that you've overcome. Yeah. And, and uh, the other story is strictly mortgage business about resilience and grit and finding a way mm -hmm. forward to get that license and then find a way to integrate your strengths and not only and in the process of integrating realizing that your ability with people is extraordinary and that complements your mom's business that she's built so well mm -hmm. and now you're off on this new direction and you're figuring out how maybe at some point to hand this off yes and i just want yes, to say that's part of the plan uh, yeah i know i've heard that before <laughs> it's not the so, first time i've heard that just so she knows though even when she steps away from it she will still get phone calls from me every single day. Which oh, is yeah. how it should I, be. I'll, she I'll, I'll be consulting. Yeah, there you go. Well, what I wanted to say was, I, I don't know who all might see this. I hope a ton of people do, uh, just people in the business, people out of the business, realtors. But I guarantee there's a loan officer or two or possibly a realtor or two who are going to watch this and say, oh, I got to talk to them. So if anybody wanted to reach out to you all and, and pick your brain a little bit, how would they get a hold of you? Or if there's somebody that needs a loan mm -hmm. and found out there's two really smart people in this room that know really well how to get loans done, how would somebody get a hold of you all? That's you. That's me. Oh, okay. I mean, email us, teamkeller at guildmortgage.net. Follow me on Instagram, Aiden H. Keller underscore. Follow my mom on Instagram because hers is way cooler than mine. The roving loan officer. You can call me too. 503-422-2929. It's an amazing story and it's mm -hmm. not surprising from two amazing people. One I knew was amazing and what I'm realizing is also amazing, just like her mom in very different ways, but truly amazing. So thank you both for being here and I'll leave the last question to Mr. Perry. Here's the last question we ask everybody on the podcast. Knowing what you know now, having been through all the things you've been through, if you were to go back and meet 13 year old Aiden and you get to sit down with her and give her one piece of advice, what would you tell her based on all of your, your current wisdom? Oh my gosh. Um, probably to be kinder to the ones that love you mm. and, oh. uh, <laughs> You're going to make me cry. Why'd you have to do that? <laughs> Be kinder to the ones that love you and know that everything's going to work out regardless of what comes at you. I love it. Well, I'm stuff. not crying. I'm not. Uh, I'm not it's crying. people I cry just, on the podcast. I feel, I feel, it's okay. I, I mean, I feel a little pinch in the corner. Of I'm almost crying here as a parent. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Good, I'm fine. I came well, close on mine, so it's okay. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. This was super cool. We yeah. knew it would be super cool, but um, this was really awesome. So thank you guys for joining us today. Thanks. Thanks.